Okay, so some exercise examples. Um, we're gonna go over these fairly quickly. Again, they, they should be pretty pretty standard. Um, and going with the safety theme here, whenever you are doing balance or kind of standing exercises, you wanna put yourself in a position in your house um, where you're able to have support if you need. So if you have a corner of a, of a counter that you can sort of have available to you, if you can put yourself in the corner of a room where you have walls, having a chair behind you, et cetera, really using your environment to you know, if you do have a unstable moment, you're not falling all the way to the ground. Okay, so the sitting toe raise. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. We're doing sitting. So with a sitting toe raise here, um, what we're doing is we're working on the front of the ankle muscles. What Jamie's doing is that she's raising her toes up off the ground. She's holding for a couple seconds and then back down. What you'll probably find is as you start to do these, the legs will feel fatigued very quickly. Um, you might feel some burning in the front of your legs, which is totally okay. Um, that's just the muscles being used. Um, again, looking for height. The exercise. How, how high you know, are those toes getting up off the ground? And then going to fatigue. So that's a nice rule of thumb with most of these exercises is can you get to the point where those muscles are really fatigued? Um, that's a good place to, to stop and take a little bit of a break. You're welcome to do multiple sets of these exercises. So um, you can do maybe a, a set of these ankle toe raises and then moving on to a different exercise and then returning back to them. Um, you really have a lot of freedom in how you structure um, these exercises. So that's, that's the sitting toe raise. The next one Jamie's gonna show is the sit to stand. So this is again, something that we use as an assessment, but also it's a really, really nice exercise, really functional. Um, we have to get up out of chairs, off of surfaces all the time throughout the day. So practicing that um, can be a nice way to build strength that you know is gonna translate to your daily, to daily life. So Jamie, the second one was the sit to stand. So she's standing up nice and tall and then controlling the way back down to the chair. Now, Jamie made a good point. There will be many people where that is too challenging. Um, so there are modifications. Uh, we talked about how to make it harder, but a way to make it easier is by using the hands. So she can use her hands to push herself up and then going back down without the hands. So what we call it is an eccentric exercise where she's controlling the lowering part of the movement, but she's using her hands to help herself up. Um, also using a, a higher surface. So you have, if you have a chair that's higher, that would be a way to make it easier. Um, and then working down to lower and lower surfaces as it gets easier for you. Um, I would say, and I think Jamie would agree that if you're going to pick one exercise to sort of work on and focus on, it would be this one. This is really, really good exercise. It translates again, really well to function and what you might have to do in your day to day. Okay. So next one will be standing marching. So here's where we want to put ourselves somewhere in the house where there's um, a surface that you can put your hands on to help balance. Um, back of the chair works really well. Uh, again, a counter works well. Or putting yourself in the corner of a room where you have walls to touch if you need. So what Jamie's doing here is she's raising her knees up. She's trying to get to the point where her thighs are horizontal. And she's alternating legs. Now, having the hands on the chair is a great place to start. It really lets you focus on the muscles of the legs and let, letting those get fatigued. However, to make this more of a balance exercise, what she can do is she can take one hand away. So now there's less sort of assistance from the upper extremities. So now her legs are gonna have to work a little bit harder to make sure that she stays vertical and, uh, and stays balanced. As that gets easy, Jamie can sort of do the final set, which is taking the hands actually all the way off of the chair. So now she's on one leg, right? It's basically a single leg balance as she's alternating legs. Now we can take that same progression and apply it to the next exercise, which is just standing knee flexion. So what she's doing is pulling that heel back towards her butt. Her knee is not going forward like it was in the last exercise, right? So it's not coming forward like that. What she's doing, she's pulling back and her knee is kind of staying in the same place. This one you'll feel in the back of the leg. And Jamie's showing that kind of starting point there where both hands are on the chair. But like last time, it can be alternated to a single arm and then eventually to no hands. 
Okay, so next one is standing hip abduction. She's gonna turn perfectly until we see this one. So still there at the chair. What Jamie's gonna do is you're gonna kick a leg out to the side and then come back down. Now it's not super easy to see from this angle, but what Jamie's not doing is leaning forward and she's not leaning to the side like that. So you can see her upper body is staying pretty vertical and it's just the leg that's coming out to the side. So Jamie's kicking out with her right leg right now, which means her left leg is taking a lot of weight. It's, it's working on balance um, and the right hip is, should be getting fatigued as she keeps kicking it out to the side. Again, we can apply that same principle from the previous exercise. If she wants to go to one hand to make it more challenging, she can do that. And if she wants to take both hands off of the chair, that is the most challenging. Okay, so quickly here. Okay, we'll go into the standing heel raise. So this is kind of the opposite of the first one. So the first one, those toes were coming up off of the ground and the heels were staying on the ground. This one, she's coming up onto her toes and those heels are coming high up the, off the ground. If I had to pick a second exercise that gives you a lot of benefit, um, if you're someone with balance deficits as it relates to peripheral neuropathy, this would be it. Um, so this is working the calf muscles. So those muscles in the back of her leg, just above her ankle. Right now she's putting both, both feet are bearing the same amount of weight, so about 50%. And she's coming up on those toes and then slowly lowering back down to the ground. That's another theme that you'll hear a lot with some of these exercises, is that, that lowering portion of the motion should be nice and slow and controlled. Um, so when you're standing up and sitting down, you're not flopping back into the chair. And here on this exercise, you're not slamming those heels back down to the ground like that. Your, your PT would yell at you if you did that in the clinic. <laughs> Here's a progression. So what Jamie's just done there is she's come up with both feet. She's taken one foot off the ground and then she lowers herself back down with the other. Might be a little hard to see with the angle, but again, she's coming up with both feet. That right foot is off the ground and she's lowering back down with the left. And she's doing that to, again, increase the sort of the load or the demand on the one leg. So this is a really, really nice progression that we, we like to use when those double leg heel raises get too easy. Now the third and sort of final progression of that exercise is just to do the whole thing with one leg. So a single leg heel raise. This is very challenging. Um, you know, this is something that, you know, I, I take a, you could take a 15, 16 year old kid athlete, come bring them in here and have them do a bunch of these and they're going to get pretty fatigued. So this is a really, really good goal to work towards for just about anybody. Um, what we use is, is the, a, a sort of a guide of 20 repetitions as a goal to be able to do in a row to say that you have strong calf muscles. So if you're looking for a benchmark or something to get to, being able to do 20 single leg heel raises is a really, really, really good benchmark to aim for. Um, now again, you'll, you'll probably have to start with those double leg heel raises, maybe progress to the ones where you're going up with two and down with one, and then eventually get to the point where you can do a single leg heel raise on your own. Sure. Let's see. And then I would like to just put a little bit of a snippet with these exercises that you just got to witness. The reason why kind of Colin and I prioritize the sit to stand and the calf raises over the rest is because of the functional carry. Um, as Colin mentioned, getting up from surfaces, whether it's your couch, the toilet, um, just a normal chair, the sit to stands can help maintain that functional independence. And in regards to those calf raises, those heel raises, that's great for trying to get into your car, going up and down your steps, um, negotiating in the environment where you have to do curves and you have to push off one leg in order to successfully negotiate an obstacle. So that's kind of why we also really find value in those two specific classes.